Would you like to understand the mother archetype and what it entails? Then listen to this entire video. Give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to learn more about self-development, dating, um, how to reduce suffering in life, and also psychological concepts like the archetypes. Let's start. Now, just like any archetype, like the um, hero archetype or the anima or the shadow archetype, the idea, the image of it is quite concrete. However, the way it manifests itself in reality through a person's behavior or interpretations of reality, sort of mental images, that can entail an infinite number of variety or variations of how the archetype actually manifests itself. Now, I'm going to read out a little bit of an excerpt uh, from Carl Jung's book, Archetypes in the Collective Unconscious, just to describe the archetype. So, um, well, just to get into the idea of it. So, um, the mother archetype entails many things arousing devotion or feelings of awe. As for instance, the church, university, a city, country, heaven, earth, the woods, the sea, or any still, still waters. Um, also, the underworld and the moon. These can all be mother symbols. The archetype is often associated with things and places standing for fertility and fruitfulness. The cornucopia, a ploughed field, a garden. It can even be attached to a rock, a cave, a tree, a spring, a deep well, or to various vessels such as the baptismal font or to a vessel shaped flower like the rose or a lotus and because of the projection uh, protection it implies like these symbols the magic circle or the mandala can be a form of mother archetype hollow objects such as ovens and cooking vessels are associated with the mother archetype and of course the uterus or anything of a, a similar shape. Added to this list are many animals such as the cow, the hare, and helpful animals in general. So just to get a bit of an idea, it seems like the mother archetype represents symbols that are protecting, uh, physically protecting, uh, such as well, like was said, the oven, so it's like a, 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 a hollow object which something can be placed inside, but also a lot of na na uh, na natural nature-related images like uh, a tree or a spring, a deep well. But these are these are all sort of pictures that are um, like growth, that represent growth and fertility and life. Let's say. Mm. And of course, all of the, the, the symbols just mentioned have like a positive connotation, but each archetype uh, represents a dual, a dual nature, a dual symbolism. So just as there's a good mother archetype, there's also a terrible mother or a devouring mother um, with an evil connotation. So and this ambiv ambivalent aspect is seen in the goddesses of fate um, called Mora, Grey and Norms. These are these three um, uh, three witches. I think they're also represented in uh, the Hercules uh, cartoon, the movie, where these three witches, they all share an, uh, one singular eye between each other. And other evil symbols like the witch, the dragon, or any devouring animal that... Um, you know, in, in, devours something like a whale uh, or a large fish, a serpent. Also the grave, the sarcophagus, deep water, death, nightmares, and also uh, feminine, uh, evil, um, evil creatures like um, Lilith or Empusa. Um, of course, uh, this list is not... Uh, is not, um, how do you say, it's not exhaustive. There are many other variations, of course, of the archetype, as I said in the beginning.
Now, all these archetypes are, have a connection with sort of like a maternal solicitude and uh, sympathy and compassion. Um, and connected to this sort of magical authority of the mother and growth and fertility. Um, and mm, and the, the, that's sort of the positive side. And again, the negative side is anything that is secret, that is hidden, dark, like an abyss or the underworld, um, something that, that devours, that seduces and poisons, um, and that is terrifying and inescapable like fate. And a, a very cool, I think, uh, religious representation of the mother archetype is the Virgin Mary, which is very similar, and the dual nature is represented in that she is the Lord's mother, um, you know, the mother of Jesus, but also, according to um, certain medieval allegories, she is the mother of Jesus, but also his cross at the same time. Um, and, of course, the the representations or the, the images of um, primordial sort of fairy tales and stories and folklore are quite uh, coherent and um, very similar. The way it manifests itself in the individual psyche is very specific and individual. It varies to a, de a strong degree. Now, uh, when you treat patients um, who might have a, a subdued mother archetype, um, one first needs to look at how the personal mother um, affects the child. Because one could assume that, you know, there's an archetype that may be manifesting itself into some sort of neurosis in the child, but it could also just be uh, the neurosis stems from how the mother practically raised the child. So that would sort of be part of the personal consciousness of the individual. Mm. And a sort of... Uh, I'd say relatively perhaps common manifestation of the archetype is that um, children project the mother archetype on the mother from a young age and they perceive the mother as the sort of transcending, magical, holy, authoritarian figure. Um, and this can become pathological when the individual doesn't overcome this 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 um, awe that the individual feels be in front of the mother. And, um, yeah. So, just as much as it can be the mother archetype which is playing out here, it can also just be the mother, the literal, practical, uh, personal mother that taught the child or projected some sort of insecurity on the child. So it's also important to um, analyze first the mother um, herself in this dynamic to see whether a neurosis lies within her that had been then projected on the child, for example, and not to f immediately assume, ah, this is the mother archetype that is uh, creating a neurosis. Um, And the contents, um, so I'm just looking at my notes here to, to sort of formulate the next uh, explanation of the mother archetype. So different, different representations of the mother, um, can be like a wild beast, a witch, a spectre, an ogre, or a hermaphrodite, which is a, is, um, I think it's, like, hermaphrodite is a representation of the sun of the Greek god, um, gods Hermes and Aphrodite. And like a way this, uh, the mother archetype can manifest itself and how you can distinguish that it's not actually from the personal mother is that the uh, child can have dreams and fantasies that are so 
obviously mythological and do not stem from practical experiences. This is also then the difference between the personal uh, consciousness and the collective unconscious, which I've explained in another video. And that's how you know then, okay, this is not from the personal mother, but actually from the archetype. Yeah, and it's, as I said, it's first very important to, when you're treating a patient, I think, to determine whether it's the personal mother or the mother archetype, and um, this, needs to be, this needs to be thoroughly investigated. Um, and it's quite difficult to do this with children as in comparison to adults, because children immediately project this, the archetype then on the psychiatrist or the psychoanalyst. And this is very, very useful because Carl Jung has a nice quote. He says, uh, these projections or, of the archetype is, a, for, um, is a, um, a treasure in the realm of shadowy thoughts. And it's key to notice these because they bring clarity to a... to uncertainty of what the key issue is in this, new, what the cause of the neurosis is. And one shouldn't dismiss the projection onto the psychiatrist as, as ridiculous or stupid. And the key here is the, it's not an annoying thing, this, the, the archetype. Um, it only becomes an issue when it's in the wrong place. And the, the, the goal here is not to deny the archetype because that would, I would say, accentuate the neurosis, but to actually dissolve the projections in order to restore the contents of the individual who has involuntarily, involuntarily lost them by projecting them outside themselves. So the archetype is projected onto something else outside. And the key here is to draw it back in into the consciousness of the individual. So the, con the individual is then able to understand um, understand its own psyche and where the neurosis might come from um, to pre prevent, I guess, the neurosis from reoccurring or to, or to also perhaps build the habit of making the unconscious contents of the psyche conscious to have more control over them then. So this is a bit of a longer video, I think, and a little bit all over the place but I give I hope it gave you a bit of an idea of how to understand the mother archetype and I made quite a lot of notes and paragraphs from the book Archetypes in the Collective Unconscious because I find it difficult to talk about this concept thoroughly because it's these archetypes are very complex and need to be described correctly in order because there are there's a high risk of misinterpreting what they really mean I think so if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. So this video was all about how the mother uh, archetype represents a dual nature. Uh, so the, you have the good mother, uh, the loving mother, and then you have the terrible devouring mother. And also how um, one needs to distinguish neuroses in a child that may stem simply from the personal mother, the literal mother, um, which may have taught the child in a suboptimal way in a traumatic way or causing trauma or from the mother archetype which is the content of the of the uh, child or the individual's unconscious so thank you for listening